Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and on this episode of the Corn School, we're focusing on evaluating how your planter performed following planting season. We're pleased to be joined by Brianne Ray of Pride Seeds and Andrew Kippen of North Valley Precision Planting. And Brianne, when it comes to uh, checking up on uh, on our corn crop as it comes out of the ground now following planting, the planter's parked, we're into into spraying season, but uh, taking time to uh, to evaluate how the planter performed, what are the things that we're looking for? Yeah, right now we're just looking for even emergence. You want to see that picket fence stand. Um, no skips or doubles. Um, one of the big thing we're checking right now is depth. You want to have good even depth so that you do have uniform emergence so those nodal roots can develop properly and your corn's going to stand strong for the rest of the season. Yeah, we're going to head to the field here shortly, but uh, before we do that, Andrew, what are some of the common things that you see? Uh, Brianne just mentioned depth and, of course, some different settings on the planter, uh, more than one probably, uh, variables that could impact depth as it uh, as it relates to where that seed is placed. Probably the number one thing that I see is just improper adjustments between rows. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you know these depth handles um, can be different from this row to that row. We actually have to go in the field, dig, truth it, and make sure that we have it set right. So if we target two inches, all rows are two inches. So just because we have the handle in the same spot doesn't mean that each row is putting the seed in the same spot. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I like to look at it as, a, in this case, a 12-row planter. Let's look at it as, you know, 12 one-row planters. And they all need to be adjusted individually of each other. Yeah. What about some of the parts that obviously wear out throughout the planting season? Gauge wheels, gauge wheel arms, bearings, those types of things. Yeah, lots of stuff wears out over time. Um, and I think... Understanding how much it can affect depth is very important. You know, just little things like the amount of rubber that's on a gauge wheel, you know, it, it thins over time, therefore the depth changes. Same thing as your your discs and your closing wheels, mustaches, all the different wear parts on this planter change depth as, as you go on. Mm-hmm. We don't maybe think about it this way, but can uh, cl- row closing... Uh, systems or whatever what, whatever kind of system you have for row closure, can that impact your seed depth as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like in this case behind us, we have a notched one, we got smooth ones. So in that case, the closing pressure is going to be different, so we got to set the closing pressure difference from row to row. Um, adjustment of the wheels, you know, spacing between them, we want them a certain distance, which is seed depth. If it's too far apart, it can actually lift up seed, changing the depth. And we are seeing so many different types of closing wheels on the market these days. I guess that is something to take into consideration if you're trying some of these different options. Yeah, just because it works on one row on a planter, you change that wheel out, everything else is going to have to change with it. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we all uh, head to the field and take a look at uh, at a corn stand and, and try to diagnose some of the issues uh, that may have been uh, related to the how it was planted. All right, we're standing in a, a stressed part of the cornfield here, seeded approximately 10 days, a week and a half ago. Brianne, what are we looking for when we uh, are trying to diagnose what's happened here? Yeah, so right now, as you can see, there's a big miss here. Um, so just trying to see what happened. Um, we have some late emerging plants, as you can see here, not as big and uh, as far along as this one. Um, and then go down the row and we see um, so there's some good consistency between um, those plants down there, but just trying to diagnose what happened right here, why there's a big miss here. So Andrew, could this be something related to the planter, or there's of course other variables that could have been at play here as well? Yeah, there's lots of variables. I mean, so I come out here right away, I want to look at, okay, start by looking at stand count. We see good stand, and there's no consistent, repetable, you know, miss, like there's something mm-hmm. on the disc. So the next is, okay, can I find the seed in the soil? Now, was it in dry dirt, or was there a germ problem? That's why we got this, and we're going to look at this next. Um, so, again, we just want to dig, see if we can find the seed, and if we can, where it's placed. It looks like the seed may have been stolen here. Do you want to ch- check if there is a seed still there? <laughs> <laughs> we can, yeah. That's a new one. Looks like there's been some theft in the field. That may be something to do with planting too shallow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A different problem. Uh, 
Brian, that planting shallow, and you pointed out some of these plants are are further behind as well. Uh, what does that mean in terms of future root development and, and plant health the rest of the growing season? Yeah, so those nodal roots that eventually develop on the corn plant are really important for structural support. So they're going to um, make sure that corn crop stands strong throughout the season. And they also do things like move nutrients and water up and up and down through the plant. But the main thing um, is structural support. So when we have our um, seed too shallow, then those nodal roots can't develop properly and um, grow downwards into the ground. So what is it, an inch and a half, two inches? What's your recommendation? Yeah, I yeah. usually say about two inches. Okay. Um, then you're, yeah, Andrew. Yeah. What do you say, Andrew? I would say two okay. inches or deeper, depending yeah. where that moisture was when you were planting. Okay. So we're missing a spot here. You know, looks like there should be a seed placement. So I'm just going to see if I can find it. So I found the seed. So as you can see, be lucky if I was an inch deep so in this particular spot that seed was you know an inch deep so way too shallow I do see that there's you know it germinated so it wasn't a seed problem it just could have been that it was just seeded too shallow and in a dry dirt didn't have enough moisture to finish I'm also seeing here obviously some seed here was plunked out of the field so it's obviously shallow enough that a, a bird of some kind found it it is missing. It's missing. Yeah, it's gone altogether. There's even some remnants here of something chewed. So that's a new one. But So now what I want to do is find a plant that looks fairly healthy. And we're going to see if the depth is truly a problem over here as well. So we're just going to gently scoop away the dirt and try to find that seed. There's part of it right there. I just pulled it off the root. So we're we're not at our two inch depth. So what that tells me is that we're probably consistent around that inch or just slightly over. This one was able to found a bit more moisture and actually came up and grew it right away where these ones may have been just in a little bit drier dirt. So definitely gonna look at that planter. We're gonna see what we find over there.